Humans live, think, and learn through stories. It's not just that we choose to think in story terms, it's that our brains are wired to process life in story terms all the time. If this is true, and it is, it has profound impact on how we see the world and navigate through life. Your brain is wired for stories. We will unpack this and more on this episode of the Field Journal Podcast. Navigate these uncharted times of chaos and confusion with the Field Journal Podcast, where each episode we decipher the events unfolding all around us with the steadfast truth of the kingdom story. Together, we'll focus on developing an eternal perspective so we can have peace and hope despite our circumstances. Now here's your guide, Kirk Buckner. Welcome to episode two of the Field Journal podcast. Give you a summary of episode one. We talked about what is the Field Journal podcast and why do we need it? We talked about chaos and confusion occurring in increasing measures in this time. We talked a little bit about who I am, and I gave you a challenge for this episode, which was think about the stories in your life. Well, why stories? Well, is there any doubt that stories are important to your life? Maybe you're a reader and you read lots of books and you enjoy reading stories. Maybe you're a binger like Netflix or other subscription services. Or maybe you watch movies over and over again of your favorite movie. Or maybe you listen to family stories and you know your family history through the stories that are told within your family. Let me read you a quote. Our lives are like stories because we think in story terms, make sense out of experience in story terms, and plan our lives in story terms. In our enlightened, literate, scientific, rational, advanced world, it is still story structure that lies at the core of human mental functioning. Now that's from Kendall Haven in his book Story Proof. Now, Kendall Haven is a story coach, a consultant, an author, and a researcher. In his book, Story Proof, he talks about the science behind the startling power of story. He has another book called Story Smart, where he talks about using the science of story to persuade, influence, inspire, and teach. Here's a quote from that book. We use stories to pass on accumulated wisdom, beliefs, and values. Through stories, we explain how things are, why they are, and our role and purpose. Stories are the building blocks of knowledge, the foundation of memory and learning. Stories connect us with our humanness and link past, present, and future by teaching us to anticipate the possible consequences of our actions. Kendall Haven got that from National Storytelling Association Board of Directors and their definition of storytelling. What I like about Kendall Haven is that in researching his book, Story Proof, he read over 100,000 pages of research from 15 fields touching on how the human mind receives processes and responds to stories. Fields like neurobiology, developmental psychology, clinical psychology, linguistics, education, information theory, knowledge management, organizational theory, anthropology, neural net modeling, medical science, narrative therapy, and of course, the storytelling and writing fields. It includes over 350 books, 70 articles, 1,500 studies, personal accounts of over 1,300 practitioners. You see, out of all of these sources, they all agree that stories are effective vehicles to teach, inspire, inform, and to educate. That's from Kendall Haven's research. Now, stories are more than just effective vehicles to communicate. Kendall Haven would go on to stay in story proof that humans live, think, and learn through stories. And probably in the most boldest statement, he would say, it's not that we can use story thinking, it's that our brains are wired so that we must use story thinking all the time. Now, let me say that again. It is not that we can use story thinking, it's that our brains are wired so that we must use story thinking all the time. That's in Kendall Haven's book, Story Smart. Now, you may have not thought of this before. Well, he even talks about the reason why. It's virtually impossible for us to be aware of our own story minds in action. Our brains are not wired to use non-story thinking. It's like 
For example, fish can't describe water because they've never experienced not water. Kendall Haven would say that's the way our brains work. We don't understand that we actually think in story terms because we think in story terms. We don't know how to think otherwise. Now, let's talk about how this might work. Our brains receive information through our senses. We see things. We hear things. We smell things, we touch things, we receive all that information in that way. The brain converts the raw experience, data and information into story form and then considers and ponders and remembers and acts on the self-created story, not the actual input experience. Now, if we can't make sense of it in story terms, we either change the information around us to make it make sense or we ignore it. Think about it. This is why five people observing the same thing like a crime have different observations. Now, even criminologists would say that if a story about a crime was exactly the same, they would know that it's not true. Why? Well, because experience and studies show that people experience the same event in different ways. And it makes sense that they process it because their brain processes the story differently. Now, just think about this. There's historical proof to this, right? If we think about it and study through history, Kendall Haven would talk about this in his story proof book, that every culture in the history of this planet has created stories, myths, fables, legends, folk tales, but not all have developed codified laws. Not all have created logical argument. Not all have created written language and exposition, but all have developed and used stories. The very examples from From the very first where we find drawings in caves, there are stories being told. We find things that are carved on tablets, stories being told. The consistent thing across time is that people have told stories to convey meaning to their lives regardless of the technology that existed in the day. And we have observational proof of this in this day and age. Marketing is based on stories. You remember commercials and products that are being promoted or sold to you by your storytelling brain. And the marketers know this. Corporations want to sell their products and services and they tell stories. They tell stories to get people to work for them, to stay at work for them. Governments study stories to put out information. In some cases, we would call that propaganda. Humanitarian groups use stories. How many times have you turned on the TV or been watching your movie that you love so much and a story about a starving child exists or a story about a child that has been sick with cancer exists to get you to help donate to their cause? There's personal proof in your life. Your life is impacted by stories. The things that you're entertained the most, the movies that you watch, the the TV shows, they're stories. The songs that you listen to. Songs are stories. There's just a truckload of evidence that this is true, that your brain is wired for stories. Test it out. Ask Google or chat GPT. Type in this, are our brains wired for stories? And just see what the results are. Well, you might be thinking, so what? What's the significant impact to why our brains are wired to process the world through stories? So maybe you can tentatively agree with me on this case. Well, the significance is the origin. Why so maybe are our brains wired for story? Kendall Haven and many other practitioners across the many disciplines would say that human brains are wired for stories because it was needed to survive as humankind evolved. That your brain is evolutionary hardwired to think, to understand, to remember, and to recall in specific story terms. Kendall Haven would say that in his book, Story Smart. This evolutionary thinking would say our species could only survive by having a brain that understood the world through story. That humans whose brains were not wired for storytelling would die out. But what if the answer to the origin is not evolutionary or survival? What if this was the truth, that humans are uniquely created beings purposely wired to think and process the world through stories? Let me say that again, that humans are uniquely created 
beings, purposely wired to think and process the world through stories. This would mean there's an intelligent designer and he purposely wired our brains for story. Oh no, I'm going to talk about God. That means that a lot of you are going to think about dropping off. Well, stick around, at least for the first five episodes. It'll all be okay and it will make sense. So let's ask ourselves the question, why would God do that? Why would our creator design us where we must use story thinking all the time? Before I answer that question, let's take a look at what a story is. Now, remember, not all stories are fiction. Stories can be fiction and nonfiction. And successful ones all have common elements. Like, for instance, there's a setting or a background. There's a start to a story. There are characters, a protagonist, an antagonist. A protagonist is a hero. An antagonist is the enemy. And there's secondary characters. Good stories have characters that you can identify with, either by putting yourself in that situation where you feel like you're that character, or you're so opposed to the character you don't want to be anything like them. Good stories have a tone, a feeling that the story conveys. Good stories have a point of view. In some cases, the story is told in a first-person sense or a third-person sense. There's a narrator sometimes, and sometimes the story unfolds in front of us. There are themes to stories, things like good versus evil, or coming of age, or love, or courage, or redemption. There's a conflict. Good stories have conflict, like a Man versus man, or man versus nature, or man versus supernatural, or man versus self, or man versus fate, or man versus society. Conflict is generally necessary for a great story. And a plot. A plot is just simply the way the writer organizes the events of the story so that you're interested and you stay interested and it makes it memorable. Now, There are certain aspects of stories that have been studied and verified over time that there are five essential parts of a good story. Gustav Freytag in 1863 developed what we call the Freytag Story Pyramid, and it identifies these plot elements, and I just want to outline them for you real quick because I think they're important. First is the exposition or the orientation of the story. It's the start of the story. It conveys what's going on. It helps us get an understanding of where we're at, what's happening, what time, what age, and sets the tone. And the next part is an inciting event where the conflict or a problem is presented, like something happened, right? And then there's the rising action, which is the struggle, that there's something that's going on and there's a struggle, a conflict, something that we have to work for or against. And then there's a climax, which is the turning point. Often the hero is introduced in this time. And there's a falling action where the hero's solution, right, or the solution being presented is applied. And we're trying to figure out, is this solution going to fail or is it going to be victorious? And then that ends with the final aspect, which is resolution. And good stories typically end in victory. We like to have a story end and victory. A story is a detailed character-based nar- narration of a character's struggle to overcome obstacles and reach an important goal. This is the foundation of what a story is. And it leads us to why God wired our brains for story. God created our brains to be wired for story so that his story could be conveyed and understood across all people across all time, regardless of technology, geography, or culture. Let me say that again. God created our brains to be wired for story so that his story could be conveyed and understood across all people, across all time, regardless of technology, geography, or culture. This means you and I are living in this story. God's story has a duality of character for us to identify with. On a macro sense, on a larger scale, the story is about humanity. It's about all of humankind and humankind's relationship to the world, to each other, and to God. And on a micro level, we find ourselves in the story. We can relate because we can put ourselves in the story with the struggles 
that we have in our own lives and how we relate to God and how we relate to the world. And in order to observe the world around us, we need to make sure we understand God's story in the correct way. And in upcoming episodes, we're going to unpack that because we call it through the lens of the kingdom story. And that will make sense as we move to other episodes. Now, let me unpack this and kind of summarize and go through a logical process so that we can move on and finish up this episode. So our brains are wired for story as the evidence indicates, right? There's a truckload of evidence. And I think if you were to look at the evidence, you would agree with all these different fields that point to the idea that our brains are hardwired to think in story terms. And if they're not, then it's just pseudoscience and it's an error and it's just made up and you might as well forget everything I'm trying to say, right? But if you do agree that our brains are wired for story, then we have to ask ourselves the question, why? Was it by chance? Did it occur by evolution that sometime just over time, our brain started to think in story terms? And if those humans that didn't think in story terms, they just died out and now here we are thinking in story terms. Or our brains are designed on purpose to think in story terms. That it was on purpose, just like our eyes are designed to be able to take in the light's refraction. That there was something unique that God wanted to have happen, and he designed our brains to think in that way. And obviously I'm saying he did that so we would understand the story he is telling. Not theology, not church doctrine, but the story that he was trying to tell and he's been trying to tell since he created. And he would do this because it would mean there would be no barriers. People would understand his story and they weren't waiting for computers or a Bible or tablets or YouTube. And so in the next episode, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what is it about God's story that he wanted to make sure each generation had a chance to understand where geography and culture and technology would not be a barrier that couldn't be overcome. So as we wrap up this episode, again, I want to leave you with something to think about, meditate on, or pray about. I want to challenge your heart and mind so that we move out of the distracted world and process something. Here's the question. If God designed humanity, think in stories so we understood his story, how would that change how we viewed history and what impact would it have on how we viewed our current time? That's all we have in this episode. I want to thank you for joining us at the Field Journal Podcast. Until next time. Thank you for being a part of this episode of the Field Journal Podcast, a production of Truth of the Kingdom. And while we've reached the end of our journey today, the conversation continues at truthofthekingdom.com. Until next time, may the kingdom story be your source of truth and hope, no matter what's happening around you.